few days ago, the NHL released this graphic on their Twitter page. It is a top 10 redraft of the 2011 NHL draft. Looking at some of the choices on here, I thought it was pretty interesting, so it made me want to do my own. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing on the channel today. We are going to be redrafting the top 15 picks from the 2011 NHL draft. I originally planned on doing the entire first round, but once I got to 15, I decided to stop because this was actually very difficult, probably the hardest redraft that I've done because the 2011 draft actually produced a lot of very good players, a lot of guys that I think are kind of in the same tier in terms of their skill level and how good of a player they are, and that made for this to be pretty difficult to choose who goes ahead of who. And remember, redrafts are pretty much based off of the player's entire career so far, and not as much how good of a player they are right now. Obviously, that does matter a little bit, but for the most part, it's based on their entire career. And as always, if you guys are new to the channel and you want to see more NHL content like this, then make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss a video and with that said let's begin redrafting the 2011 draft with the 15th overall pick i have the new york rangers selecting centerman vincent trocek current member of the carolina hurricanes vincent trocek was originally a third round pick 64th overall by the panthers in this draft so he moves up a good amount of spots trocek's 284 career points are 13th out of the entire 2011 draft class i'm a big fan of his overall game it has been kind of tough for him ever since his breakout season in 2017-18 but if he can get back to that then carolina definitely has a fantastic player in trocek 14th overall, I have the Dallas Stars selecting William Carlson of the Vegas Golden Knights, who was originally a second round pick, 53rd overall in this draft by the Anaheim Ducks. Now, Carlson would probably be a little bit higher on this list, but he didn't really break out into the player he was now until the 2017-18 season, where he had 43 goals and 78 points for the Golden Knights. Now, since then, his numbers have came down a little bit, but everybody expected that, and he's still been putting up some solid numbers, and he obviously brings a lot more to the game than just the points. He's one of the best penalty killers in the NHL, and he's very responsible in his own end. Moving along now with pick number 13, I have the Calgary Flames selecting JT Miller, who really broke out this season and became a solidified top-line contributor. 72 points in 69 games, by far a career high in points and in points per game. A lot of people will probably say he should be a little bit higher, but that's recency bias. Remember, this is based off of the player's entire career, but you can bet if he keeps this up in Vancouver, he will definitely climb up this list a couple of spots in the coming years. He had a great season. He's a massive part of that team now. Next up at pick number 12, I have the Carolina Hurricanes selecting Brandon Saad, current member of the Chicago Blackhawks. Brandon Saad has had a really solid NHL career, already a 20 goal scorer on five different occasions. His 588 career games are fourth out of anyone in the class. His 169 goals are fifth out of anybody. And having a player like Brandon Saad, who has had a really solid career at the number 12 spot, just shows you how deep this draft class really was. Moving on to pick number 11, I have the Colorado Avalanche selecting goaltender Jordan Bennington of the St. Louis Blues. Yes, it is an extremely small sample size. He's only played 82 regular season games in his career, but you can't tell me that if we went back with the GMs knowing what they know now, that he wouldn't be a top 15 pick. Obviously, Bennington went on an incredible run last season. The Blues really turned it around and eventually won the Stanley Cup. He was obviously a massive part of that, and for the people that thought it was a fluke, he really shut them up pretty quickly with his play this season. He's solidified himself as one of the top goalies in the league. Getting into the top 10 now, with pick number 10, I have the Wild selecting Ryan Nugent Hopkins, who was originally the first overall pick by the Edmonton Oilers in this draft. I don't think Ryan Nugent Hopkins is a bust by any means. He actually turned out to be a really solid NHL player. Overall, his career totals are good. 604 games played, 443 points. The only reason he's at the number 10 spot is because, like I said, this is a really deep draft class. And ever since Dreisaitl and McDavid have started to dominate the lead together over the past two seasons, that's really when Ryan Nugent Hopkins started to thrive. And I think the biggest reason why is because there really isn't a lot of pressure on him anymore. Next up, at pick number nine, I have the Boston Bruins selecting Dougie Hamilton. This is the same spot that he was drafted in the actual 2011 draft, and pretty much ever since he came into the league, he has been a good offensive defenseman. But this season, he played incredible. I personally didn't really think he had it in him. 40 points 
in 47 games before the injury. Had he not gotten hurt, I think it would have been him and John Carlson neck and neck in the Norris Trophy race throughout the year. Pretty much whenever Dougie Hamilton was on the ice, Carolina dominated the play. Just an incredible year for him, and hopefully he can carry that on into next season. Pick number eight, I have the Philadelphia Flyers selecting Mika Zibanejad of the New York Rangers. I feel like a lot of people will say he should be a lot higher, but again, that's recency bias. I mean, before last season, he only cracked the 50 point mark once but if he continues to play in the coming years like he did in the 2019-20 season you can bet he would climb up this list a couple of spots he was incredible for the rangers this year i've said multiple times on the channel before he led the league in goals per game which is pretty insane i don't really think anyone expected that from him heading into the season it'll be interesting to see if he can keep it up moving along now at the number seven spot i have the winnipeg jets selecting jonathan huberto of the florida panthers who was originally selected third overall in this draft and this is yet another Another player who has really broken out over the past couple of seasons. It seems like he's really at his peak right now. 78 points this season in 69 games, 92 points in 82 games last year, and you could definitely make a case for him to be higher in this redraft. The only reason I have him at number seven is because sometimes when I watch the Panthers play, I feel like Huberto's only worried about the offense as opposed to a complete game, but obviously still an incredible player. Moving along with the sixth overall pick, I have the Ottawa Senators selecting Gabriel Landeskog of the Colorado avalanche who was originally taken with the second overall pick in this draft and landeskog has had a very solid career already a 20 goal score on seven different occasions he scored 34 last year with a career high 75 points he's one third of that amazing line including rantanen and mckinnon and sometimes i feel like he's underappreciated he does all the little things that it takes to win i think he's a great captain and has been ever since they gave him the c he was put in a pretty tough position coming into the league colorado wasn't a very good team they drafted him second overall and pretty much said, you're the captain now, fix us. And he's done a pretty good job. I'm a big fan of his game. Getting into the top five, fifth overall, I have the New York Islanders selecting centerman Sean Couturier of the Philadelphia Flyers. I think he's one of the most underrated players in the entire NHL. He's played the most games out of any other player in this draft class, a very durable player. He's always been a fantastic two-way centerman pretty much ever since coming into the league, but the past three seasons, he's really ramped up the offense too and has become a really good two-way threat for them. I think it's kind of crazy that he hasn't won a Selkie trophy yet. I definitely thought he would have either won one in 2018-19 or 2017-18. Next up, fourth overall, I have the New Jersey Devils selecting goaltender John Gibson of the Anaheim Ducks. Goaltenders of the caliber of John Gibson don't really come around too often and are pretty hard to come by, so that's why I have him in the top five. Pretty much ever since 2014, I think John Gibson has been one of the better goalies in the NHL. It's unfortunate that the past two seasons, the Ducks weren't weren't very good so his win-loss ratio definitely took a bit of a hit and even though this season his individual numbers weren't the greatest there still isn't many goaltenders I'd rather have on my team than John Gibson. Getting into the top three now with pick number three I got the Panthers taking Johnny Goudreau of the Calgary Flames who was originally a fourth round pick in this draft 104th overall one of the best draft deals in recent memory. Goudreau has played the 18th most games out of anyone in the draft class but still sits third overall in the class in terms of points which is really impressive. Pretty much ever since his rookie season, he has been a game changer for the Calgary Flames and one of the very elite wingers in the NHL. Yes, the 1920 season wasn't amazing for Johnny Goudreau, but I think he's going to be just fine and bounce back next year. Now on to the top two. With the second pick, I have the Avs selecting Mark Scheifele of the Winnipeg Jets. It was a pretty easy decision for me to put him at the number two spot. He's been one of the best centers in the NHL for many years now. He's Mr. Consistent. Every year, the Jets can count on him to give them around a point per game or a little bit above that and a stat that impresses me about Shifley is the fact that he's never been a minus in his entire career so far yet the Jets have only made the playoffs three times with him on the team. Shifley is a beast and the Jets have to be extremely happy the way he's turned out considering they drafted him seventh overall. And finally first overall I have the Oilers selecting Nikita Kucherov of the Tampa Bay Lightning who was originally selected in the second round 58th overall. What an absolute steal the Lightning got with him. Kucherov, in my opinion, is the only franchise player to come out of this class. It was a really easy decision for me to put him at number one. He's 12th out of anyone in the class in games played, but then first in goals, assist, and points. Just an amazing talent. He's over a point per game for his entire career. He won the Art Ross, the Hart, and the Ted Lindsay in the 2018-19 season when he had 128 points. I really don't think anyone should have a problem with him being first overall. So that does it for my redraft on the 2011 NHL draft. If you guys did disagree with some of my picks, make sure to let me
me know down in the comments section below what yours would look like and if there are any other drafts that you want me to do a redraft on make sure to let me know as well i'm always open to hearing your guys' ideas and yeah if you guys did enjoy the video please make sure to go down there and drop a like on it thanks for all the support on the channel lately and if you are new to the channel and you have not already and you want to see more nhl videos like this then make sure to hit that subscribe button and i will see you all in the next video